on this episode of Videos No One's Ever Asked For. Now, mankind is really good these days at sticking technology where it just probably doesn't belong. Whether it's weird smart forks, or cat robot pillow things that have tails, or robots that will no doubt turn against us. We just love making things that are smart. And this video is no different. Today, I'm taking aim at the sheep herding industry. <laughs> You know, that is one sentence I never thought I'd say. Now, I'm still not sure if there's actually still a sheep herding industry or not, but I did learn two things while doing some research. Number one, there is a high octane edge of your seat type article about how the pandemic has affected sheep shearing. And number two, it turns out the British NSA is very different from the American NSA. What prompted all of this was I came across a video of dogs herding sheep. As the flock of sheep moves, they form sort of an organic blob that morphs and changes as it's influenced by its surroundings. The same phenomenon can actually be seen when thousands of birds fly together. Destin from Smarter Every Day made a great video on this. And this type of group movement can actually be modeled pretty easily using something called a Boyd's algorithm. Now if I knew I was ever going to teach an AI how to herd sheep, I needed to first model the sheep. So I set about in Python modeling a Boyd simulation. A Boyd simulation has three main components that impact the movement of each object. The first is separation, which means the individual members try not to crash into their neighbors. The second is alignment, which means each member of the flock tries to match the heading and velocity of its neighbors. And then lastly is cohesion, which means each member tries to move towards the average position of the flock. Since I'm not going for just a normal Boyd simulation and I'm trying to simulate sheep, I need to add in a simulated sheepdog into the environment. I also need to model that the sheep are afraid of the dog and try to stay away from it when it gets within a certain radius of them. This gets modeled as an acceleration that the sheep feel in the opposite direction of the dog with a magnitude inversely proportional to the distance between the sheep and the dog. It's kind of crazy how mesmerizing this simulation is, especially with the effects of the sheepdog on the flock. When I first made this, I definitely spent like 15 minutes just sitting there watching it. So now, all I need to do is turn the simulation into a game that the AI can play. Now this is literally like the first game sort of thing I've ever made, so I know it doesn't look great, but I think it'll do the trick. I added two gates for the dogs to move the sheep through, as well as the ability to have multiple independent flocks and sheep dogs at the same time, all playing at once. This will parallelize the training and make the process much faster, because multiple genomes can be tested all at once. For the AI in this project, I'm actually using something called NEAT, which stands for Neuroevolution of Augmenting Topologies. In this video, I'm not going to go super in depth about how it works or what it is, but I highly suggest you go check it out because it's really cool. Coincidentally, there's also a Python package that makes implementing NEAT really easy, so that saved me a ton of time when I was doing this. The overall structure for this neural net is that it has 10 inputs and 4 outputs with 2 hidden layers. The 10 inputs allow the neural net to see where the dog is located as well as where the sheep are located and how those positions relate to the gates. The 4 outputs allow the dog to move either up, down, left, or right. In order for the AI to measure its success, it needs to know the fitness of each generation. This can be thought of as essentially the same thing as a score. This score is vital, and it's really the only thing the AI cares about. To calculate this score, for each herd, I divide the field into a grid and assign a point value for each square. Each sheep is given the score of the block that it is in, and then to get the total score of the flock, you just add all of the scores of the sheep together. So each generation, each herd will start in field number one, and then just by moving the dog, the AI has to herd the flock through field one into field two, and then field two to field three. This is where it can get kind of complicated because it's not necessarily a direct relationship between the dog moving and the score that results from the round. This indirect relationship between the dog moving and the herd reacting is actually one of the reasons why AI is really good for something like this. Because rather than trying to quantify everything and tune our parameters exactly, we can just hand all the information we have to a neural net and it will figure itself out over a long period of training. With everything ready to go, I just let it run, and I hope that I would come back to an AI that would bring Big Sheepdog crumbling down. However, what actually happened was all the sheep were actually just forming a line, which made me realize I made a really stupid indexing error. But with that fixed, the real training could actually begin. As you can imagine, initially the AI has no clue what's going on, so it either moves randomly or doesn't move at all. However, it does eventually figure out that there is some correlation between the way it moves and the way the herd moves. 
after many hours of training and many generations, it does actually figure out they can go through the gate to get an even higher score. After another couple hundred generations and many hours of training, it figures out that there is a third field that it can get to and even get a higher score. At this point, our AI controlled dog has accomplished its goal and moved the herd from field number one into field number three. I did notice that in each generation, there seems to be a lot of genomes that still stick around the origin point. I think this is just because I don't have my parameters tuned right in the config file for the uh, neat library I'm using. So by playing around with those parameters, I might've been able to get the train a little bit faster, but with what I use, it seemed to work for this project. So I'm happy with it. I let this model train for a thousand generations. And if we plot the max score of each generation versus a generation number, we can clearly see that the AI learns a lot initially, but then it quickly plateaus. This could likely be optimized by using different parameters or adjusting the data that the neural net is seeing. Either way, the AI dog did learn how to herd the flock of sheep through the pens. So I'm gonna call this project a success. So now after all that training, I present to you the final and best sheep dog. As you can see, the AI learned that the best method of hurting the sheep is to like shove them into the fence like some sort of middle school bully. I'm not 100% sure why it found this method to work the best, but all of the best genomes seem to do it. So that is all I have for this video. If you guys like this type of video, then let me know down in the comments. And if you liked what you saw, then subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.